This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar called Ask Larry Anything. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you three different ways to correct a color blemish in a scene. Terry asks, I have a number of talking head videos that were recorded in the late 70s and early 80s which display a green blob in the center of the image. At the usual framing, the blob is smaller than the speaker's face, and he moves in and out of it as he talks. Now, to me, this sounds like a camera sensor problem, and goodness knows in the 70s and 80s, cameras were not the highest quality in the world. So I sent a note back to Terry, and I asked to have them send me a, uh, a sample of what this green blob looked like. And I want to show you how you can consider fixing it. So here's the image. And this is the green blob. If we look at the person's face, there's this area here. This is a still, it's not the video. But there's this area here which is slightly greenish. Because I don't have the clip, I can't show how the blob stays and the face moves. But what you might want to think about is this. I'm going to select the clip and go to the color. Now, I can do this in both Premiere and in Final Cut. I'm going to illustrate in Final Cut because it was open for something else. And I'm going to add a color curve. What's happening is the green is distorting the person's face, and I'd like to be able to make sure that the person looks as good as normal. I could create a shape mask. The problem is I then have to worry about tracking this shape mask over time. Instead, I want to use a color curve to boost the skin tone to try to decrease some of the green. To select the clip, go to Color Curves, and I'm going to select, just because I can, any color except white. I'm going to select the green, but I could do this off red and blue. Click the eyedropper tool, and click on skin tone just outside where that blob is, right here. And it positions a, 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 a marker, cursor, some flag, whatever that is, at the color it changes the color of this from green to match skin tone and shows me the grayscale. Black is here, white is here. This is sort of a dark mid-tone gray. I'm going to double click on the line below it to set a region and click a line below it. I just single clicking, not double clicking. And I'm going to grab this and drag up. And what I'm doing is I'm slightly increasing the amount of this color, that skin tone, to try to decrease the look of the blob. So one, as I now play this back, I can make this a bit more skin tony. Or, again, using that same concept, let's just go back again, undo. I could set something here and set something here and decrease the green without changing the color. See how I'm taking that green out? Just a hair out. And I've now selected that range for his face. And yes, I've got a little bit of a a grayscale difference, but I don't have the green difference. So that's the second option. Third option is I can go up to the color masks here, add a shape mask. I'm just simply clicking on this icon to add a shape mask. It says, what kind of shape mask do you want? I want to add a shape mask that sort of covers that, that uh, blob and zoom in and rotate this. So it becomes more blob-like. The inner rectangle, which, and we can make it a, from a circle to a square. I'm going to have it be a little softer. This is the area of greatest change. This, from the inside line to the outside line, represents feathering. I want to feather this, but not too much. By selecting the eyedropper tool and clicking on skin that I like, remember how we had that flag appear? Then I reset this and set within the green, I set a range that goes on either side of that marker. And then drag down to just simply take out a little bit of the green in that grayscale area that I flagged by setting my, my uh, grayscale value. And the shape mask will limit the change only to where that blob is. You could add another draw mask and start to stack layers, but the blob itself is not that great. And so you have three ways to fix it. One is to boost skin tone, which I think looks a little artificial, but it's nice to know. Two is just simply to select the green range 
and take the green out, or three, add a shape mask to specifically remove the, uh, t to limit the effect to a specific area, and then reduce some of the green. And now as we look at it, that green blob is less noticeable. At least it looks simply as a, as a grayscale shift as opposed to a green blob shift. So this is before and after. And the nice thing about this is the, using the color curves without the shape mask requires no keyframes. Using the shape mask, you may need to keyframe if the blob moves. Just something to think about. This has been an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar called Ask Larry Anything. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 269. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.